One of the biggest corporate shakeups in U.S. history happened in 1981. My bell was monopoly. The agreement calls for a reorganization of the AT&T company. Two researchers from the University of Chicago, Suzanne Cabeza and Salvatore Maddy, knew that this was going to happen and designed a 12-year experiment to study the way that this big shakeup, this big event, affected the executives at the company. The data collected during the six years after the breakup showed that for about two-thirds of the executives, this was an absolute disaster. Maddie and Cabeza showed that for these people, this stressful event caused problems with their performance, caused problems at home, in their relationships, and with their mental and physical health. The weird thing was, for about one-third of the executives, none of these problems were really present. In fact, they seemed to be thriving. This difference really piqued the interest of the researchers, and they decided to dig in. What they wanted to figure out is, what's the difference between the group of people that really struggled in dealing with this challenge and the group that thrived? Not only did they eventually figure out that answer, but they sort of stumbled into this topic that's been proven over the past few decades to impact resilience, learning, performance, and leadership. It's time for a deep dive into the forgotten topic of hardiness. Welcome to the Learner Lab Podcast. I'm Trevor Reagan, and each episode we dig into research that can help you and your team get better at getting better. To help us out today, I tracked down a brilliant researcher named Paul Bartone. Hello, do you hear me all right? He's one of the world's leading experts in hardiness, and he's been studying it since the beginning. I'm a, a research psychologist, a PhD. I retired from the Army uh, after 25 years, and I'm cu currently a visiting research fellow at National Defense University in Washington, D.C. All right, so let's go back to Illinois Bell. What did they find in this analysis? There was actually three factors that had a significant impact on whether people kind of thrived during this big shakeup or really, really suffered during the shakeup. Maddie and Cobesa basically discovered that the personality or the attitude dimensions that distinguished those high stress executives who managed to stay healthy uh, despite what was going on around them and the organizational chaos uh, compared to those who were getting physically sick but what distinguished the healthy from the sick were these characteristics, commitment, control, and challenge, which they kind of glommed together under the hardiness rubric. Paul is like the dream guest here, and he's going to work us through our three categories. What is hardiness? Why does it matter? And what are some strategies that you and I can use to build it? Hardiness is really a mindset. It's a, it's a, a, a kind of a, a set of attitudes that contribute to how people cope with stress. But it's actually much more global than that. It's, a, it's an entire way of looking at the world. But uh, most, of the, most of the work and the research on hardiness is focused on how it can moderate effects of stress on performance, on health, uh, and on adjustment. So hardiness is, it's really made up of uh, three major components or facets. And those are commitment, control, and challenge. In Paul's book, Hardiness, they give really good working definitions of these three factors. People high in commitment see life as overall meaningful and worthwhile, even though it sometimes brings pain and disappointment. To be high in commitment means looking at the world as interesting and useful, even when things are difficult. Uh, so that's the commitment co co component. It's really about engagement with, with the world around you and with yourself. Control is nothing more than a sense that what you do makes a difference, uh, that you can influence events around you and uh, that, that your actions matter in terms of outcomes. And challenge the third C is really a perspective on, on change. So when change happens in life, is it something that's interesting and uh, that you're curious about and maybe thinking you can learn something from? Do you welcome challenge and, and change or do you shrink away from it and look for stability and security 
and essentially sameness in your life. So that's hardiness in a nutshell, commitment, control, and challenge. Okay, so the way to think about it is hardiness is sort of our ability to deal with change and challenge and stressful situations. And the three C's are the building blocks of hardiness. It's what hardiness is made out of. Sometimes hardiness is confused or sort of jumbled up with a more popular topic that you've probably heard about, grit. They do get bunched up and a lot of people don't really see much of a difference between grit and hardiness, but there is a big difference. Now grit, as you probably know, uh, the originator, Angela Duckworth, uh, University of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, the grit is composed of two factors, consistency and persistence. But it's a single-minded kind of passion for a goal or activity. And that's what is missing from grit. It's, it's a good thing as far as it goes, but the big difference between hardiness and grit really comes down to uh, this adaptability or flexibility dimension. So grit is good and fine, but it's more of this kind of blinders approach of this is a target, this is a goal, and I'm going to pursue it no matter what. And hardiness is more about being flexible and adaptable. And it's this general ability to deal with challenges, stress, and setbacks. In some of the experiments that we're going to get into, they actually can compare grit to hardiness and show the different ways they impact people. All right, so we have an idea of what hardiness is and what it's made out of. Now I want to get into kind of the meat of this, which is why does it matter? Why are we making an episode about it? And to do that, we're going to work our way through a series of different experiments. Honestly, one of my favorites and the reason I think Paul is so incredible is one of the first ones he did. Early on, he realized that there was sort of a, a limitation to the original Illinois Bell experiment. It was only looking at executives. And this is all interesting research. It, it's very, very um, potentially very valuable research. But how do we know that it applies, has any application at all outside of white collar, you know, white male executives who you're studying? So mm -hmm. does it apply to women? Does it apply to other ethnic groups? Does it, does it apply to blue collar workers, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where I came in. And I, when I approached them and I said, you know, hey, uh, uh, Dr. Maddie, Dr. Cobesa, I would like to join your research group. So I developed a a PhD research proposal that would look at hardy, stress, hardiness, resilience, and health in Chicago bus drivers. So they surveyed nearly 800 bus drivers and they asked them questions about their work and life stress, their health. They even measured their hardiness. Paul then separates them into two groups. Group one is made up of people experiencing high stress, high illness, and high negative symptoms. Group two is comprised of people that are also experiencing lots of stress, but they have lower illness rates and fewer negative symptoms. And just like in the Cabeza and Maddie study, Paul was searching for like, okay, what are the root causes of this difference between group one and group two? And it ends up that hardiness was one of the three most important sort of differentiating factors. Other studies showed similar results. They found that hardiness helped firefighters, nurses, lawyers, and even undergrads deal with the stresses they faced in life more effectively. Stress is part of life for all of us. That's where hardiness comes in because hardiness is a, a mental, you know, a mindset that has a profound impact, especially on how we cope, how we manage stress in our lives. People who are high in hardiness, you know, they cope more effectively with stress. They tend to make use of active problem-solving coping strategies. They'll, when there's a problem that comes up, they'll look for ways to cope with it, to deal with it. Hardiness does not free you from fear. It doesn't free you from self-doubt. It doesn't free you from anxiety. You know, people who are high in hardiness uh, experience fears, but it's how do you cope with, what do you do with those fears? That's the difference. And right. people who are high in hardiness, they manage those fears. 
differently. At this point, I've got my hands on about 50 different experiments and studies that look into this topic of hardiness. The first type of study that I want to talk about we'll call like a prediction study, which is simple. They measure people's hardiness level and then they simply observe to see like what type of things does high hardiness predict. One study measured the hardiness levels of candidates into the West Point Military Academy. And then they analyzed their graduation grades and gave them a survey three years later that measured kind of how adaptable they were. And it ends up that hardiness actually predicted better performance at West Point and more adaptability afterwards. There was one that measured people's level of optimism and their level of hardiness. And they found that actually hardiness was a better predictor of the way that those people would deal with stress. Another one showed that hardiness predicts post-traumatic growth for military personnel. I even found a few studies from the sports world that showed that high hardiness actually predicts better performance in sports. And then there's an experiment that compares grit to hardiness in first year cadets at the USMA. And they found both grit and hardiness actually helped with retention rates, but only hardiness predicted cadet performance. So I guess the TLDR of that section, hardiness matters a lot. It predicts better performance, better learning, better leadership. Where I want to spend the rest of our time together, where I want to end the episode, is answering the question that's on your mind right now. You probably have two. First, can we build hardiness? And second, if yes, how do we build it? Yes, indeed. It, it, it's trainable. It's not an easy thing to do. Right. But if, especially if the person is, is motivated, then yeah, it can, be, it can be trained. The other type of studies that I've been trying to get my hands on, we can call intervention studies, which is, okay, let's try to build hardiness and see what happens. Remember the Illinois Bell Telephone Company experiment? Also, it's really hard saying Illinois Bell Telephone. We're gonna call it IBT for now on. So remember the IBT experiment, the original one by Maddie and Cabeza? Well, it ends up, that after the big shakeup, after the breakup, some decision makers at IBT actually asked Maddie if he could develop a hardiness training program for the employees that were still around. So Maddie designs like a 10 week hardiness training program for these employees. And they found that at the end of the program, this actually did significantly increase their hardiness levels. And six months later, they actually saw improvements in their job evaluations and even in their health. This was one of the first studies that showed actually hardiness can be trained and it can be developed. I found some interesting work by Sharon Judkins and she developed a hardiness training program that they tested out with a group of nurses. And what they found is by going through the program, they could increase hardiness and then that had an impact on turnaround and the way that those nurses dealt with the stresses that they faced in their job. And I actually found some cool experiments that Salvador Matti did with undergrads. In one experiment, they identify a group of students that are at a high risk of dropping out. Then they divide them into two groups. One group takes a hardiness training course. The other group, the control group, does not. And the group that completes the course, their dropout rates actually decrease compared to the control group. In another experiment, they take a group of undergrads that have similar GPAs and demographics. They divide them into two groups. One group, again, is offered the hardiness training program. The control group is not. Six to 24 months later, when these students graduate, they saw an increase in GPA for the students that went through the hardiness training program. Now that we know that hardiness can be trained and developed, what are some strategies that you and I can actually use to do that? In the book, my book with Steve uh, Stein, we talk about some of the ways, some of the details in terms of how it can be trained or coached. I found a military textbook and there was a chapter in it by Paul Bartone that talked about different strategies of building hardiness. And they sort of divide it up into the three C's. I'm going to just read directly from it. Tips for building hardiness commitment. Take some time to think about what is important to you, what's interesting to you, your personal values and goals. Work on increasing your skills and competence in some area that's important to you. Take pride in your past success and achievements. Pay attention to what's going on in the world around you. Read and observe. Try new things. 
Tips for developing hardiness control. Focus your time and energy on things you can control and influence in your life. Work on tasks that are within your capabilities, but also moderately difficult. Break difficult jobs into manageable pieces so you can see incremental progress. Ask for help when you need it. Recognize your successes. And when you're confronted with a problem that you can't solve, turn your attention to things that you actually can control. Strategies for building hardiness challenge. Remind yourself that change is an opportunity to grow. Do not live every day by a rigid schedule. Allow some variation and surprises. Be willing to change your plans to meet changing conditions. When you do fail, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? Try new things, take reasonable risks, Try not to dwell on disappointments, learn, forgive, and look ahead. So like I said, it's kind of just understanding what the three C's are and doing things that can build us up in those different categories. Another way that you and I can develop our hardiness was actually part of Sal Maddy's original hardiness training program. He talked about the importance of self-development, that when we focus on self-development and getting better at stuff, it can actually boost our levels of hardiness. And this actually makes a ton of sense. Think about when we learn something new, the type of seeds that that plants. One is I'm learning something new, which in a way means I do have control. My actions are leading to outcomes. When I'm learning new stuff, obviously there's more meaning and curiosity. So that's developing the commitment. And obviously in going through the learning process, there's bumps, there's setbacks. And when I'm really taking my learning seriously, I'm finding opportunities in those setbacks, those challenges, those problems. That's hardiness challenge. When we develop skills and focus on our learning and development, I think that's kind of a backdoor way of building up the three C's, which can increase our hardiness. The last application that I want to get into might be the most exciting, which is looking at this from the leadership perspective. It ends up when we develop our hardiness, we become more effective leaders because we become better role models. And by putting these actions on display, we can help with the learning, the adaptability, the development, the performance of the people that we lead. There have been a couple of studies done that have shown that when there's an awareness on the teacher side, on the, tra on the trainer side of the hardiness concepts, commitment, control, and challenge, and the value of learning from failures, et cetera. These training programs actually, uh, they're finding that hardiness levels have actually increased. And that's been true for sur trauma surgeons in training. It's been true for fire and police in training. And it's been true for military personnel in training programs. Not huge changes, but measurable, significant, statistically significant increases in hardiness. How do we help people find more meaning in what they're doing and develop that commitment? How do we help people develop control? How do we help them understand that their actions do matter, that they're an important part of this team? How do we help people find opportunities in the challenges and setbacks we face? By understanding hardiness and what it's made out of, we can find different ways of building up the three C's, which will help the people around us, again, get better, perform better. Obviously, there's more work to be done here. The name of this episode is not every single thing that you need to know about hardiness. No, this was like a big overview because I do think it's an important topic. I don't think it gets enough attention and I hope that this episode might change that. As we wrap up, I wanna give a big thank you to Paul Bartone. Thank you so much for your fantastic work and thank you for being willing to share it with us. We'll be back next week with a brand new topic. We'll see you then.